Hi, everyone. I'm immigration lawyer John. Thank you for joining us today. It's Wednesday, March 31st, 5 p.m. Pacific time. Every Wednesday, we come here live to take your immigration questions and, uh, you know, general stuff that you have that you want to get more information on and give general kind of guidance just because you never know uh, without reviewing a particular case in person. It's really hard to give exact advice, but we're here to help you out with that kind of stuff. We're doing a special thing this time, which is providing a, a raffle kind of thing, a lottery where, you know, a subscriber to the YouTube channel who likes and puts a comment uh, and also adds in the comment consultation uh, raffle. I'll, I'll be updating the name every time. We'll, uh, we'll contact you. One person will be a winner. And within, uh, you know, 24 hours, I'll contact you to say you get a 15 to 20 minute free video consultation to discuss, to discuss the immigration issue that you have. So definitely check that out. It's going to be a fun thing to do. I think you'll all like it. Uh, and we'll you'll do more and more, see how the reception is. Uh, the other good news is that the uh, travel ban that affected H-1B holders and L-1 holders will be expiring. And President Biden has not indicated that they are going to be uh, renewing that. So a lot of people have these work visas or ability to get these work visas, but they were not able to actually get them for the embassy issuing them due to the travel ban for those particular categories. And that will be opening up, but the problem still exists that many embassies are not scheduling appointments, so people are not able to get in the embassy to get the visa issued. It's still a mess. It's still not clear when things are going to get fixed up, um, but it's a little better now. So with that, let's get it started. Kimberly Burris, our first question asks, our receipt notice is still late. Unfortunately, yes, there are we are with USCIS when you submit a case, usually and historically, two or three weeks later to get a receipt notice, whatever case it was. Some cases are still coming within three or four weeks, but the vast majority of cases are taking anywhere from six weeks, you know, a month and a half to three months. And it's it's horrible that it's taking that long. It's very, you know, very weird situation, uh, but that is happening. Uh, and so be prepared. A lot of people are frustrated, confused, wondering why is this the case? That kind of, you know, it's kind of bizarre that they would take this long, but that, that is the case. They are taking this long. So they are, are taking a while. Uh, so be prepared for that if you have any type of case. You know, the issues with the receipts is bad, but another question is, are biometrics notices coming? And that's another inconsistency right there because typically biometrics appointments used to come a month after getting a receipt notice. Now they're taking seven, eight, nine months. I'm getting a lot of people who have naturalization, citizenship cases pending, and they're having problems and they're not getting a notices and it's really stressing them out. And so they're contacting me. What's wrong? Is there anything I could do? Not really in these kind of cases. Not much you can do because it's not up to you. You have to wait for them to schedule it. And so once that happens, um, then you'll get your biometrics. For the most part, it should be an issue. Um, you know, it's but uh, and I can't comment on individual cases because I don't know if there's something particular wrong with your case. But they, they are taking a while. Uh, and that's just a situation happening right now with uh, biometrics appointments. Biometrics being the fingerprint appointment that you take uh, for your green card case and stuff like that, or or a, or a citizenship case, or or uh, you know renewal of your green card. All these different kind of things they take a while. Now I have biometrics appointments for some green card cases that are coming consistently at at, a, at the regular time, and others are taking a long time. So there's no like regular thing I can say this or that. It's just the whole thing is bad. That's just the way things are happening right now. As Stefan asks. If a green card is permanent legal status, is DACA temporary legal status? So DACA is not legal status. And that's really important to know. Deferred Action for Childhood Arrivals is a program that's created that says, although you're here without permission and you should be removed from the United States, go to court and be deported potentially, uh, we're just not going to pursue your case at this time. It's prosecutorial discretion. It's not considered status. And so, it, you know, it's hard to explain this. And so a lot of people, even lawyers, will say, okay, you have DACA status or something like that, but it's not status. It's not something you can use to then get a green card or something like that. It just means they're not going to come after you. They're not going to pay attention to you. That's that's all it is. So if you have DACA, you don't have legal status. You just have deferred action. It's a decision not to prosecute you uh, for a temporary period and to give you work permit. That's all that is. Nuhara might ask, can I wait in the U.S. until I get a decision on my nunc pro tunk request my I-94 and H-1B visas are expired. So this person had an H-1B visa, so work visa. It expired. Uh, and, uh, you know, it seems what they mean is they filed an extension that was denied. 
and there there was air for that so or they they filed the extension late and so you do a thing called nunk pro tunk npt nunk pro tunk you say no although i filed this late and it's a problem i'm filing it late now please fix it up and make it as it was as if i didn't file it late and so your question is can you stay in the united states till you get a decision well, you know, uh, unless the case is approved and we don't know if it's going to be approved or not, you are accumulating unlawful presence time. And so because your case is denied. So there's a decision on there. Um, so, uh, I mean, I can't say it's denied. I haven't seen your case exactly what happened. So I can't say it for sure. Inevitably, whether to stay in the United States or not during a non tunk filing is a personal decision, whether you think it's appropriate or not, or you want to take the risk because if it's denied, you may end up accumulating more unlawful presence time. It could lead to three or 10 year bar. I can't advise you as to what to do. I'd have, have a full consultation for you to make a judgment uh, decision on your own if it's something that you want to do. I came to US on a B2 visa and I got married to my now US citizen husband six days later. Uh, I now understand this is fraud. What should I do now? My husband and I have not filed any papers. Well, it's not necessarily fraud. You can come to the United States on a tourist visa and get married. Actually, you know, this is really important. So, um, you know, I do this video. There's other immigration that do these videos, and several of them in this scenario will say you did fraud, you're going to misrepresentation, get denied. And I had a I had a consultation with a guy uh, nine months ago, uh, and he had done the situation, and he came to the U.S. to visit his uh, girlfriend. They, they got excited, they got married, and then, and then you know, COVID-19 hit, and they decided to stay in the United States and not leave and file for green card of their own. And then they read about this 90-day rule, and they're freaking out. They called a bunch of YouTube lawyers. Uh, all of them said, you committed fraud. You need to leave the country immediately, request a waiver. I said, that's crazy talk. Just go to your interview. Nothing's going to happen. And sure enough, uh, two days ago, went to the interview. Nothing happened. He got the green card because, you know, he didn't intend to stay. You could get married in the United States. That's no problem. It's if you lie to an officer, if you're married to a U.S. citizen, let me specify, if you're marrying a U.S. citizen, they don't harp on this unless you literally lie to a visa officer and there's proof they lie to a port officer at the airport. The reality is people come and decide to get married on a whim. Maybe they were planning on married, getting married six months in the future, but they move their plans forward and then they decide to change their mind. When it comes to U.S. citizen marriage cases, unless there's really indication of fraud, uh, it's not a problem. So I need to, Sheena, review your case in private to see what's going on there. Um, but I wouldn't necessarily say you did fraud. So you got married and your husband's a U.S. citizen. Uh, you know, I don't know. I, I wouldn't be we'd be too worried about that, but I need to know the facts of your case. We'd have to have a long conversation. If you get denied for a visitor visa, can you apply for green card through family? Okay, so uh, this is our last question, everybody. If you get denied for a tourist visa, it depends on why you were denied. So if they denied you for a tourist visa, uh, and then you want to get a family-based case. If they denied you because they said we're afraid you're going to come to the United States and not go back home, you're going to overstay or, and stay in the United States, that doesn't typically become problematic for a future green card case. Now, some officers may find that problematic very rarely. I've seen it, but it's very rare. But on its own, that's not much of a problem. It's just a general denial. But if they deny your tourist visa case because you know you lied to them, made up some sort of fraud and they accuse you of fraud in the Nair case. And that will become a major problem for any future immigration benefit. So uh, just no lying. And uh, most of the time, tourism is not a problem. But I've seen random officers read it the wrong way. I wouldn't be too worried about that. Uh, that's more of the exception rather than the regular rule. All right, everybody. Thank you so much for listening. I'm immigration lawyer John Kasravi. I forgot to even talk about the ultimate marriage green card guide. This uh, free ebook I have guide that breaks down the marriage green card process from beginning to end. Please check it out by going to www.marriageimmigrationlaw.com, marriageimmigrationlaw.com. Down the Ultimate Marriage Green Card Guide. You'll learn all the A to Z strategies about it. Then schedule a consultation. Uh, we'll be back again next week, Wednesday, 5 p.m. Pacific time, doing live here on Facebook, LinkedIn, TikTok, and YouTube on the various pages, two Facebook pages, two LinkedIn, uh, one LinkedIn page, but two YouTube pages and TikTok. And hey, if you're watching on YouTube, like, subscribe, and comment that you want to enter the free consultation raffle, and we'll see if you get picked. It'd be nice to speak with you. Talk for 15, 20 minutes to see how we can help. All right, everyone, until next one, God bless, be safe, see you soon. Bye. I hope you enjoyed this educational video. We have a second channel with much more information as well at JQK Immigration Clips. Please check that out. Also, you'll find our social media site has a lot more videos, images, and information about the U.S. immigration process. Please check those out on the various social media websites.